Hello, I'm back, and today we're going to talk about Shovel Knight. Um, we'll be going over, this is my in-depth review, warning there will be spoilers, but I will clearly mark the spoiler section. Um, the important thing to realize about Shovel Knight is that this game is um, made by Yacht Club Games. It was uh, fully funded in Kickstarter. But I believe they were asking for like a very small sum, like fifty thousand or a hundred thousand, and it went well above that. And what they wound up creating is a really good game. Um, <clears throat> how good? Well, we'll get into that that in the review. As usual, this review will be going over the graphics, the gameplay, the music, um, and then an overview of of the entire game. After that, I will have a section clearly marked spoilers that um, is just going to go into the spoilers. So, blah. So let's dig in. Okay, first we'll go over the graphics. Um, graphically speaking, Shovel Knight is um, a relatively faithful recreation of the NES. Except you have to, except with a few caveats. Um, it is an idealized version of recreation graphically of the, of the NES. Um, it has 56 colors. It has um, <clears throat> with plus four for special encounters and certain bosses. Um, it tries to faithfully recreate the feel of the NES, um, except where modern sensibilities would be um, offended. It's a Graphically, it's a fusion between um, the NES and modern games, um, but you you don't really miss it because it's idealized. It's what the NES in our heads was when we were kids playing. So ultimately, graphically speaking, it's it's a gorgeous game. Um, Shovel Knight looks great. The art is great. The characters are great. The enemies are great. Um, all of the enemies in the game have character. They really, especially the boss. Even the generic enemies have character. They look like they belong in this world. And that is a very, very hefty thing to add to a video. That being said, um, graphically, um, the game has no real flaws. There are a few uh, graphical things that um, might kind of mess you up a little bit. A few you reuse sprites, but in the interest of what the game is, it works out well. So next, we'll go to gameplay. Gameplay. Oh boy. This game really shines when it comes to the gameplay. The gameplay is friggin' awesome. This game basically combines the, um, is a combination, uh, geez, how to explain this? If you want to explain, if you want to explain to someone who hasn't played Shovel Knight what Shovel Knight plays like, um, let's see, take DuckTales 1 and 2, okay, let's say put them into one cartridge, then, uh, take, uh, Legend of Zelda 2, um, Link's Adventure, then take Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, then take, um, um, Mega Man 2, and then Super Mario Brothers 3, <laughs> okay? Take all five of those games, make them have some weird twisted medical, some weird twisted orgy, and through, by through some mysterious, some, some awesome alchemy and miracle of science, the child born would have the DNA of all five parents. This is what Shovel Knight is. And it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Shovel Knight takes the best parts of all of these games. <clears throat> Musically speaking, um, well, I won't talk about the music. That'll be the next section. But gameplay-wise, this game takes the best aspects of all of that. It has the tight platforming of Mario 3. It has the pogo jumping, except in this case it's a shovel of DuckTales. It has the town sections, but a, an idealized, perfected town sections of um, <clears throat> Castlevania 2. It has the um, 
it has the boss progression of Mega Man 2, it has the, um, the organic style, um, the organic style, uh, platforming of all three. It's very, very well made, okay? It's a very well made game. Um, it, um, I won't say it's nostalgic, because as someone who has an NES and a Famicom, I can tell you right now, <clears throat> um, a lot of those games that we loved as kids are damn near really hard to play now. But, you know, if you're used to playing those types of games that are very organic and the platforming isn't so much memorization, but knowing how to play, when to, when to take a risk, when to play conservatively, when to play... Um, not conservatively, um, liberally, then, you know, that's when you really begin to get into the game. Um, the enemies are, um, you know, relatively easy to beat, um, the normal enemies, um, in the beginning of the game, and the difficulty gradually rises up. By the end of the game, you'll be taking out enemies that early on in the game you would have considered to be really tough and once you really begin to know how to play the game the mechanics it's like <laughs> this dude's easy now a uh, common complaint from a few people about this game is that it's hard um, it's not hard <laughs> it's it's not really like ugh, hard the thing about this game is this um, if you haven't if you aren't into playing platformers then the aesthetics and the gameplay design and you know how you play the game is going to seem very alien to those people. Like if all you've played is Call of Duty, Halo, Battlefield, Dark Souls, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of current gen games and last gen games, this game play style will be difficult for you. If you have spent a long portion of your time playing games like Castlevania, Mega Man. Um, Legend of Zelda 2, you know, games like that. This game, DuckTales, this game is going to be just, eh. This ain't, this ain't no thing. <laughs> this is just, this is just a very what good, a very highly, a very well-made NES game. And it is exactly that, very well-made. Now, let's move on to music. Ah, uh, you hear that? That is my favorite song in this entire game. It's called Strike the Earth um, by Jake Kaufman. He's the dude who does the music for this game. And it really encapsulates the, the, the nostalgia. And when I say nostalgia, I mean N-E-S-talgia, not nostalgia of this game. This, I mean, basically the sound chip that they, the, the music that they use to make this game is um, based off of the Japanese version of the NES, later version, the revised version, which used music that was exponentially better than what the NES started out with. And it sounds really good. I mean, really good. All of the music fits the levels. All of the music really gets your blood pumping. It's really good. Um, that being said, um, <clears throat> The music in this game just 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 kicks ass. It basically shows what um, what made the what makes a game of the NES so great. Because not only was the gameplay for a lot of games on the NES great, but the music also had to be good too. <laughs> okay, the music also had to be good. It wasn't just gameplay alone. So as you're as you, as you're listening to it. Um, this, this, the music for this game was just awesome. It basically was, you know, a level of, of, of musical fidelity that you just didn't get in a lot of, that you just don't get in a lot of games. And it gets your blood pumping, it gets you ready for adventure and everything like that. Basically, this game is, 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 musically speaking, is up there. I mean, it's really up there. It's, the music is just awe-inspiringly good. I mean, it is really awe-inspiring. Um, which leads me to my conclusion after the cut. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yes, the conclusion. Basically, the conclusion is, as the title of this video says, Shovel Knight is one of the best NES games never released. Until now. I mean, it is really good. It had Shovel Knight come out 25, 26 years ago. People, it would be on my shelf. Or... But it would be on my shelf with uh, DuckTales, Super, Mar uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, Mega Man 2. It would be up there. It it's that good. It's that friggin' good. Um, for people like me who grew up playing those games, this game is just, oh, it's gorgeous. It it's, it's gorgeous. This game, oh, it's good. I'm having a nostalgia galsum, <laughs> but it's really good. It's very good. Um, so basically, what can you do if you want to play Shovel Knight? Well, you have many alternatives. You can get it on 3DS, Wii U, PSN, Xbox 360, um, Xbox uh, One, PS4, PC. Basically, there is no excuse for you not to have this game. $15 and it's yours and you get one of the best damn games ever. And if you really like the soundtrack, you can get it for free or pay something for it. Um, I paid something for it. I'm not gonna tell you how much, but it was a decent amount. Um, from, I forget which website. Uh, I can't seem to remember, but you can go on Google and say Shovel Knight soundtrack and you can find how you can get it because the soundtrack's good too. Um, as a matter of fact, all you've been hearing in, in this entire review is Shovel Knight soundtrack, so <laughs> that ought to be a lesson to you. But, um, so now that we've gotten to the conclusion, spoiler alert, I'll be going into the spoiler section after this. Okay then, um, this is the spoiler section. Okay then. Um, basically, I'm just going to give you some hints and tips and tricks and all that type of stuff. Um, once you beat the game by defeating the ultimate evil, which is actually the evil curse that was awoken in the Forbidden Tower, um, that basically Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, um, went into, that inhabited her, turning her into the Dark Enchantress, um, which you free her from. Um... You get New Game Plus, which means you get to keep all of your awesome items, all of your stats, everything like that, and play the game all over again. Um, in this mode, the enemies hit a lot harder. Well, yeah, a lot harder. Um, they do, as a matter of fact, they do double damage. So enemies that took off half of a life point take off two, take off a full one. Enemies who took off one take off two. So basically, um, you have to play even more conservatively. But, conversely, you get to, you can go back through levels and get better items and all that type of fun stuff. So, I mean, ultimately, it actually helps, because then you can go back and get those, um, music sheets you might have missed. Um, so, that's kind of cool. Um, for the tougher bosses, here's my little hint. The Phantom Buckler. It lets you turn yourself invisible for, like, three or four seconds. Use it, learn it, love it. That combined with the um, the I core or E core you get from the I'll be right back. Oh God, I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Delivery man was ringing my doorbell. Oh, oh my God. Anyway, uh, so back to spoiler alert. Um, basically, um, you know going around, the i -Core will save your ass um, in the game, it will replenish your magic and replenish your health. In New Game Plus mode, since everything hits harder, this is important. Um, but the Phantom Buckler is still really useful. Now that you've got a handle for how the character enemies patterns are, how they'll react to you, the game is actually easy. Plus, you will have upgraded your shovel, which basically just upgrades your special attacks, and your armor. Hint, the, dyna the dynamo armor really helps. Two down stabs, two consecutive down stabs, um, which basically uh, powers up an automatic ultra-powered attack that you'll do. So it's really useful against bosses. It's really useful against 
um, mini bosses. It's just a very useful armor. Um, the other armors, not so much, but <laughs> the dynamo armor kicks ass. So, now that we've gotten those spoilers out the way, um, we are at the end of our video. Sadly. Um, that being said, um, I bid you adieu.